In the world of business today, there are so many kinds of businesses. You've got from small startups to bigger organizations, and each of them has just one goal, to improve and be successful. However, there are different tools that companies apply to assist them in achieving their goals. And thanks to the competition that has become so fierce in the market, a company's tool of choice can have either a positive or a negative impact. In this video, we're going to be discussing the business tool that evaluates both the internal and external factors that influence a company. So what is the pestle analysis? Now, pestle analysis is sometimes referred to as pest analysis, and it's a concept in marketing principles. It is used as a tool by companies to keep track of the external factors impacting the business. What's going on out there? So as such, it allows them to be aware of the environment that they're actually operating in or are planning to launch into. Now, pestle in its expanded form means political, economic, social, technological, legal and environmental. Now the pestle analysis gives a bird's eye view of the whole environment from various angles. So as a result, it is a broad fact-finding activity that could affect an organization's decisions while actually helping it to maximize opportunities and minimize threats. So when conducting a pestle analysis, you must ask the right questions because this framework represents one of the foundations of strategic management. Now, because of this, this analysis will not only define what a company should do, but also accounts for an organization's goals and the strategies attached to them. Also, each of these factors may be different depending on the kind of company or industry. But one thing is certain, any company that wants to develop must conduct the PESTO analysis. Repeat urgent request. To understand this analysis, we need to take a look at each of the letters of the PESTO. Let's get it started. P, political factors. Now this factor determines the degree at which a government may influence a company or an industry. So for example, uh, the government may bring new tax reforms that might change the whole revenue generating system of company. Political factors include tax policies, fiscal policies, trade restrictions and reforms, tariffs. Skip to the end. Political stability. Now, these are the factors that a government may levy around the fiscal year, and it may affect the outcome of the business. What's the letter? What's the letter? E. Economic factors. Now, economic factors determine the way an economy would actually perform that directly affects the company and can actually have long-term effects. Now, these factors include economic growth and decline, interest, exchange, inflation, and wages rates, minimum wage, working hours, and unemployment credit availability and cost of living. Now, for example, if there is a rise in the inflation rate of any economy, then it will surely affect the way companies price their products and services. And on the other hand, it will also affect the purchasing power of a consumer. And this may cause a change in demand and supply. S, social factors. Now, the social factors help companies to better plan for their actual marketing analytics and strategies. So social factors include cultural norms, uh, expectations, health consciousness, population growth rates, age distribution, career attitudes, health and safety. For example, the Indian market generally experiences a boost in demand for vehicles during the last months of the year. This is due to marriage and the festive season. So as such, these factors are really important for marketers as they target certain customers. So this factor also highlights the local workforce and its willingness to work under certain conditions. T, technological factors. Now, technological factors are factors that can affect an organization, their operations in a good or a bad way. Now, these factors can look at the innovations that happen in technology. And since we're in a global village, several new technologies are going ahead in the technology fields. 
if a company fails to meet up with the trends, it may lose its position in the market. Other technological factors include the rate at which technology changes, the evolution of infrastructure, and any government or institutional research that goes with it. What's the letter? What's the letter? What's the letter? L. Legal factors. Now, legal factors have two sides the external and the internal sides. Now, the external sides are the particular laws that affect the business environment in a certain country. Meanwhile, the internal sides are the policies that companies maintain for themselves, which an employee is expected to abide by. As such, the legal analysis will cover both sides and helps to figure out strategies in the light of these laws. Examples of these laws are consumer laws, safety standards, labour laws, other legal factors may include changes to, to employees, legislation, access to resources, imports, exports, taxation, all of these are covered in legal. You know, it's, it's the law. E, environmental factors. Now, environmental factors are mainly concerned with the external factors of the environment. So they could include like disposal laws, environmental laws, energy consumption regulations. However, environmental factors in the pestle analysis, they generally focus on particular industries such as tourism, farming, agriculture originally. But now thanks to global warming and the increased need to switch to sustainable resources, every goal orientated company has been compelled to consider environmental factors. This is where corporations' social responsibility comes into play. This is how we do it. How to actually do a pestle analysis. Now, to carry out the pestle analysis, there are 10 steps you have to follow. Bear with me, you're nearly there. Now, number one, identify the scope of the research. So your research should cover both present and future scenarios. Also, it should apply to the areas of the business world where the particular organisation actually operates. So number two, form a good team and assign responsibilities. Now, this will help decide how the information will be collected and by who. Forming a team will also help to identify more than one person's perspective and bring more diverse evidence and perspectives to your analysis. Now, number three, identify appropriate sources of information. Using the pestle analysis can give a bigger focus to your industry, but it will help to explore all information that will give you a bigger view of the external environment. Four, gather and assemble the information. Now, to help you with this, it is better to create a template as your basis for recording all the information. Now, there are several templates available online. I'll stick some links in the comments below. Now, we're on to number five. Be sure to analyse your findings. Number six, create an order of issues that need to be addressed after you've analysed it. Now it's best to first resolve the issue that can create the biggest impact. Your next step will be to identify the business specific operations that can best address the issues. Eight, involve all the stakeholders by creating a well-informed document that examines all the issues. Number nine, after creating a document, Disseminate and discuss your findings with stakeholders and decision makers. Number 10, the last thing to do in the pestle analysis is to decide on the actions to be taken and things that need to be monitored regularly. So for this analysis to be effective, it must be performed on an ongoing basis because organisations that do so enjoy the competitive edge of spotting trends before others. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!